Welcome to another episode of Connect and Convert, the Sales Accelerator Podcast, where each week we share insider secrets of how to grow your sales fast. Okay. Hey, Leah. I'm joined by Leah. I'm Dennis. Hey, Dennis. Hi. Leah. Hi. It, it's Leah Bumphrey and it's Dennis Collins. We're back again. We have another special treat. I hope that you caught a previous episode with our guest, Craig. Why are we talking to Craig? How to win the hearts, the money, and loyalty of profitable customers. 101 relational marketing principles. A Wizard of Ads marketing guide. Wow. I love the way he introduces himself in the book. I'm an Aussie. I love a good glass of red, a joke, and a laugh. I love spending time with family and friends. I take my work seriously, but not myself. Please let me introduce, ladies and gentlemen, a fellow Wizard of Ads partner, a colleague, and a dear, dear person, a man who has decided in his life to make a difference. Please welcome Craig Arthur. Thank Craig. you. Thank Glad you. you Boy, back. that was, um, yeah, that was a, okay. another big entrance. Well, you know, you're a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> You represent the entire nation of Australia and New Zealand, probably too, and maybe the Asia Pacific. I don't know. Just take Fiji in there too and New Caledonia. I'll <laughs> add them all. Tonga. You, you should. <laughs> Tonga. That would be my favorite. Look, <laughs> yeah, I, hope, Tonga. I, I hope that we have some of our listeners and viewers who have seen and heard you in our previous episode. So we're not going to backtrack on that. We want to cut some new ice, as they say, up in Canada. So. I I particularly liked, you have a lot of great quotes in the book, very quotable book. And we, we were kidding about Confucius. You know, whenever you don't know who said something, <laughs> Confucius said it, yeah. <laughs> but but here's, a, here's a quote that, I, that caught my fancy in the book. Sending men to war without training is like abandoning them. And you have rephrased that for the current day. Sending staff to help customers without training is like abandoning them. Really? That's pretty heavy, abandoning them. So it, you, your, <laughs> your conclusion is staff, mar staff training is good marketing. Help us with that. You summed it up nicely because we always say these are the people that are going out, um, you know, representing you and you don't train them. Um, so what does that say? First impressions that people are going to have of your business are of untrained staff. Now, in Confucius' time, they just got killed. In modern yes. times, in modern times, you miss the sale um, purely from the fact that your staff aren't up to up to speed. And so, just on that, there's a really good um, and if people can watch the first episode we did on a relational transactional, but. If you're running relational ads, which we touched on, are uh, ads about the customer and helping the customer, and your sales team are basically doing something different, which is like transactional or they're not trained, there'll be a disconnect. And in any business, the minute there's a disconnect, people stop. So you need that flow. You need something to... A good example, there was ads on um, Australian TV for a company. I won't mention the name, but it was an insurance company. And the little guy in the ad was so likable and lovely. He was just this really nice guy. And they, they sat in a car with, with customers and talked to customers about the money they saved. And it was, I just felt good about these ads. And I just kept watching these ads and I felt good about them. So guess what happened? The time to renew my insurance, car insurance, what did I do? Mm. Oh, I, I thought of these, <laughs> I thought of these people first felt good about them, and called them. They were relational ads, and the first person that I dealt with was a hard-sell salesperson who was exactly the opposite of what their ads oh, no. were. Mm. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I, I've, had I a, just... I've had a client <laughs> like that. I, I actually, it's interesting you say that. I had a client that was doing lovely relational advertising. It was award-winning stuff, but... When you dive into the sales team, it was all transactional. Hmm. No good. No good. You, you've mm. obviously been there too. 
conversion rates just plummet when that happens because it's like your friend. You've got a friend who's lovely, and the next thing, the next time you see them, they are completely the opposite. And it's like, whoa, this, what's going on? This is crazy stuff. So I, I, I just hung up from this woman. And every time I see the ads now, it just reminds me of the experience I had with this salesperson. Now, there's two problems there. One, the company has, has projected an image that's not really them, or their sales team haven't been trained in that particular way in the, in the way of the company. And so that salesperson has just reverted back to her normal training which means that's, that they uh, haven't yeah. trained her up. So, well, and, uh, yeah, as you know, that's what we do is, is we try to take salespeople who tend to um, go to the transactional and try to make them relational. Leah uh, and I do this every week. Maybe she, you have some thoughts on it, Leah. Well, it makes me go back to something else that's in your book, Craig, and something that Dennis and I talk about a lot, and it's the core value. The other way we express that is that sword in the stone, which makes me think of Wizard Academy, of course, whose sponsors, co-sponsors are this podcast. But honestly, that sword is so important because you 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 know what your business is about and you want your people to know about it. How how like what would you expand or how would you expand on that? Because I know that's a big part of your belief system yeah, is laid out here. Sword in the stone, core values flow and that's where this salesperson if 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 she understood the core values or the company had her, trained her in the core values she wouldn't have approached the sales process like she did um core values to me are why we call it the sword and the stone the arthurian legend where only the rightful king um, arthur could pull the sword from the stone and um to do that the, they're your core values as in I will always do this. As a business, we will always deliver on what we promise. And it's also all the things that we will never do. We will never, ever make a sale at the cost of hurting the customer or, or you know, the customer has to win as well. So what are the things that you will never, ever do? Um, I don't work with customers or businesses that I don't believe in, that I don't trust. And I wouldn't deal with myself. So now that costs you money. If if you believe in a North Star or a, a, um, core values, are only core values if they cost you something. If it costs you a customer, well, you are actually yeah, that's that's a true core value. If it doesn't cost you any money and you just move, well, you didn't really. That wasn't a core value at all. I met a young guy once. He was back in the day when you had webmasters and he worked for a media station. And he said, we don't have a sword in the stud, we, um, stone. We have a sword in the mud. We just move it. The sales team move it wherever they want to go just to make budget. So now that is, we only deal with relational, I only deal with relational um, owner-operated companies. Now, the beauty is with that, the owner can say is, you know what? We don't have to make budget this this month. We're not going to make budget at the cost of compromising what we believe in. Um, that's when you know that it's a true core value. So at Wizard Academy, we talk about Wizard Academy, there is actually a tower where you stand and look up and there's a sword set in the top of Wizard Academy because it's such an important part of what we teach and what we believe in at Wizard of Ads. And if you stand there on these, these two um, feet that are set in the stone in the ground and look up, at the top of that um, sword, you'll actually see the North Star that we discussed in the first episode. Right. So the North Star, the sword and the stone, and the entrepreneur is where they are now looking up. They're the things we talk about that are so important to our company and our training facility is they're actually built there emboldened so and it's part of our logo as well the the child with the sword and the and the star the child represents the business owner who has that childlike quality of i'm going to get knocked down but keep getting up you know as a kid 
um, Leah, you've got three boys. They've probably done some crazy stuff when they're kids where mm. you get on a you get on a push bike. I used to have a dragster back in the day. I'm 62. So back in the day, you had a, a three-speed dragster with, you know, um, handlebars up here and it would look like a chopper bike. Whoa. And I'd, I'd be, yeah, I was, I was yeah, tough. Okay. And set up a ramp that was wobbly and go down this ramp and all of a sudden, you know, you'd crash, but you'd get it back up and do it again. Now, an entrepreneur, why we use a child representing the entrepreneur, they get back up all the time. As a business owner, you're going to get knocked around, but you get back up. So a child has that that constant curiosity, that constant wonder. They're looking at the world. Most people, unfortunately, as we get older, we tend to get belted around and we, we lose our confidence and we just, there's been some songs, we just do it for the man and we just make the money and go to work. The entrepreneur looks at things in a different way. And it doesn't matter how old they are, they still have that sense of wonder, that curiosity, um, constant learning. They're just looking at, you know, how can we make the world better? How can we do things better? So again, the values come important. My values tend to be curiosity is a big one. And I think I've heard you guys discuss curiosity before as a salesperson. As a salesperson, curiosity is yeah. asking questions yeah. and looking as learning as much as you can about the, the person that you're trying to help. Um, empathy is something that I learned way back. And that was my story as a kid. Um, empathy, fun. I just love to muck around and enjoy life. Um, I like to be serious, but you need to have fun and laugh. Simplicity is a big thing. And that's when I put my book together, I made sure that I, I simplified a lot of, um, well, 101 plus it's actually 112 marketing, relational marketing concepts and reduce them down into one page that was so simple to understand that it'd fit on one page. And Dennis and Leah, you said it before too, each page is like a seed where it's the seed of an idea that you can turn into a, a blog post, a podcast. It's something that you can take with your business and try and implement it forever just on one page. And there's one idea, if you take nothing away from the book, there's one idea that it says, if you want to build a relational customer-centric business, focus on one question. Does this help or hinder the customer? If it helps, do it. If it hinders, dump it. Now, that's like a North Star. Everything we do, if you've got your sales staff and your frontline staff trained, all they need to know is, does this help or hinder the customer? If it helps, do it. If it hinders, don't. And so you don't need a mission statement because... You know, if you lined up mission statements, 100 people, most people wouldn't know what the mission statement of their business was. But a North Star is something that everyone should understand. We're going to help the customer. If it helps, do it. If it hinders, don't. So I think sometimes people get confused with mission statements um, and North Stars, but a mission statement is just a whole heap of um, ad speak. It's a whole heap of um, buzzwords stuck together that makes it look sound good, but no one can, no one can remember them. Um, you know, Craig, what I am uh, loving yeah. when I'm yeah. I'm listening to you is your passion for this. And I just visualize you sitting down with just a blank screen blinking at you as you try to put this all together because it's the, the format is simple. It's designed to help. It's your core values at work here. And that I think is what's so spectacular because it's 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 tangible and it's usable. You're not just showing off how much you know which you could have easily done in the book what could have been this thick. Instead, it's, mm -hmm. hey, this is stuff I know, and this is what I've experienced, and here are stories, and this is what you should do. Craig, could I ask you a question? Uh, maybe you've been asked this before. What was the most surprising thing or the most unexpected thing or maybe the funniest thing that you learned while researching and writing this book? thing I loved about researching this is it's been something that I've been doing all my life because if you look at it this way, I love collecting things and be it quotes or be it ideas. And the trouble is before, I never really had anywhere to put all these in one place. I had them, you know, all over my desk and in my head. And yeah. this is something I thought, you know what? I need to put all this down into one book, these ideas that I've been collecting, these quotes that I've been collecting, not, 
most of this isn't my stuff. It's just stuff that I found that works. It's stuff I believe in. It's stuff that we apply for our customers. I've applied it in business before. So everything has been something that works, but it's, so I'm a curator, a collector of um, things instead of teapots or, or tennis rackets. I like to collect ideas and quotes. And this I found was a really good way to put them all in one place so that, you know what, I've got a lot, I've got a whiteboard up here with a lot of them stuck on the board because you know what happens? You have so many ideas in your life and you forget so many. Oh. Yeah. And I like to keep turning to the, I go through the book every day and go, yes, I need to apply that. I need to keep applying it. So if, if anything else, the fun thing for me was it was just getting all, all the stuff in my head down on paper and just learning as well and, and highlighting other people because I've highlighted some partners and other people I know in the book, because again, there's so many smart people out there. And it's, it's just shining the spotlight on them. Um, and that's what I like to do as well. I'm like the man behind the curtain. I don't like being out in center stage. I like to be behind the curtain helping a business person or helping someone else succeed. And sure. the whole idea of this book is just do these things and you will. It's just a matter of applying these things. That's the hard part, isn't it? <laughs> what we, it we is. and I kind of have a slogan uh, with some of our customers. You know, it's not about what you know. It's not even about what you learn. It's about what you use. <laughs> what What do you put exactly. into action? And you know what? Uh, but I, I highly encourage people to pick up the book. Uh, we could again spend hours on this: how to win the hearts, the money, and the loyalty of profitable customers. This is my highly marked up copy. I've got lines and arrows, and I mean, I've just devoured this several times. I've also provided it to several of my local colleagues here in Florida, and they are loving it. So uh, what can I say? Good for you. You, you did a good no. job here. Even more, you shared with us. We appreciate the time. Uh, that's, I think this is going to be very interesting to our listeners, to our viewers. Uh, I hope someday we can we can do this again. When episode two, I, I notice on the cover of the book, <laughs> episode one. So I'm hoping that there's an episode <clears throat> two. I, I think that I'm was sure that maybe book. he's going to announce that to us today, Dennis. Who knows? Yeah, well, no, I would. Uh, he has the every opportunity. I'm going to shut up and let him announce right now. <laughs> episode two is coming, and that was the message to myself more so than anyone else that I need to have the second book. Um, Understood. And I was I put volume one on there, and I was having coffee with my good mate that we meet every Saturday and discuss stuff. And he said, um, "Volume one sounds like an encyclopedia, and they died like the dinosaurs." And <laughs> so I I said, "Okay, Star Wars. Let's make it Episode one." Um, so he went to the bathroom. When I come back, I said, "Look, I've changed the cover for you. Bravo. Episode one. It's now episode one. So, episode one. but it, it it is because it is something I now want to do a book a year, um, moving forward. Wow. So, mm, aggressive. And we can say we knew him when, Dennis. We can say we, we knew, knew him when. when. Yeah. We 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 hope he'll still talk to us after he reaches the highest of fame and fortune. Maybe he'll remember us. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not so um, little people. Well, <laughs> that, I have one closing thought that that Craig wrote uh, that I want to capture and share with our listeners and viewers. One day, a little voice in your head will say, "I'm fed up with my business not growing. I'm sick of wasting money on advertising. I want more profitable customers." That's when people call Craig Arthur, right? <laughs> That's when people call Craig Arthur. How can they reach you? Tell us your best way to get in touch with you. Best way to get in touch with me is my email, craigarthur at wizardofads.com. Or That's you can easy, go to my website. Arthur. Yeah, um, wizardofads.com.au for the website, but just .com for the email address. .com. I love it. I, I, and don't you guys, I hope all of our listeners and viewers love his accent. Huh? We could just listen to that all Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Huh? That's kind of why I wanted you on the, on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, I, I like said, the I've been book, but the practicing accent. It, 
practicing this accent for 62 years. So <laughs> it's you got it, you got it down, mate. Good Almost, on you. Almost, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leah, I would love your thoughts here as we close this session out. What uh, what are you thinking? Well, you know what? It is just such a pleasure to see someone who had the idea and actually did the deed. I mean, this this did is it. I don't know how many hours, I don't know how much brain space, but it's a lot to put it down and then be able to share that with people. Because when you talk to someone, you talk to one person. When you write a book, you talk to generations. So bravo. And uh, Mm. we can go on Amazon. We can order this. We can. And Dennis, I think this might be our opportunity. The best question that we get emailed to us on from this episode gets one of Craig's books. Yes, great idea. Yes, we usually have a question of the day, and we will uh, save that for the next time. So when you hear this or see this, please send us your question. If we choose your question, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. No problem. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, guys. uh, Anything else, Craig, that we missed that we should talk about before we sign off? No, I think the important thing is, as you said, it's just the daily, once you've got a destination or a goal in front, get a process to get you there and just focus on the process. Focus on the the daily things that you need to do in sales or in business and just keep focusing on doing those things well and you'll get to where you want to go. And we know we're said. having you back on again because you're going to have episode yeah. two you, for us. You may, yeah, we, we'll save a space. I mean, we're a very busy podcast, but we'll save a space for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you for listening and viewing. This is Dennis Collins and Leah Bumfrey. Leah Bumfrey saying so long, connect and convert. We'll be back next week with a new episode. Tune in, connect and convert. Thanks, Craig. <laughs>